ഓം അജ്ഞാനതിമരന്തസ്യ ജ്ഞാനാഞ്ജനാശോലാകയ ചക്ഷുർ ഉന്മിൽത്തം യേന തസ്മൈ ശ്രീ ഗുരുവേ നമഹ ശ്രീ ചൈതന്യ മനോഭീഷ്ടം സ്ഥാപിതം യേ നഭൂതലെ സ്വയം രൂപാ കദാമഹിയം ദാതി സ്വാപദാന്തികം വന്ദേഹം ശ്രീ ഗുരു ശ്രീയുതാപത കമലം ശ്രീ ഗുരുൻ വൈഷ്ണവാശ ശ്രീരൂപം സാഗജാത്തം സഹഗണ രഘുനാഥാൻവിതം തം സജീവം സാദ്വൈതം സാവധൂതം പരിജന സഹിതം കൃഷ്ണ ചൈതന്യ ദേവം ശ്രീരാധാകൃഷ്ണപാദാന സഹഗണ ലളിത ശ്രീ വിശാഖാൻവിതാശ ഹേ കൃഷ്ണ കരുണാ സിന്ധോ ദീന ബന്ധോ ജഗത്പതെ ഗോപേശ ഗോപികാ കാന്ത രാധാകാന്ത നമസ്തെ തപ്തകാഞ്ചന ഗൗരാംഗീ രാധേ വൃന്ദാവനേശ്വരി വൃഷഭാനു സുതെ ദേവീ പ്രണമാമി ഹരി പ്രിയ വാഞ്ചാകൽപതർഭ്യശ കൃപാ സിന്ധുഭ്യ പതിതാം പാവനേഭ്യോ വൈഷ്ണവേഭ്യോ നമോ നമ ജയ ശ്രീകൃഷ്ണ ചൈതന്യ പ്രഭു നിത്യാനന്ദ ശ്രീ അദ്വൈത ഗദാധര ശ്രീവാസാദി ഗൗരഭക്തവൃന്ദ ഹരെ കൃഷ്ണ ഹരെ കൃഷ്ണ 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 ഹരെ 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 രാമ ഹരെ രാമ 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 ഹരെ 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 കൃഷ്ണ ഹരെ കൃഷ്ണ 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 ഹരെ 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 രാമ ഹരെ രാമ 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 ഹരെ 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 കൃഷ്ണ ഹരെ കൃഷ്ണ 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 ഹരെ 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 രാമ ഹരെ രാമ 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 ഹരെ ഹരെ ജഗത്ഗുരുശീല പ്രഭുപാദി ജയ ഹരെ കൃഷ്ണ ഹരിവൺ സോ വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് ഈശോപനിഷത് ക്ലാസ് ലാസ്റ്റ് വീക്ക് വി ഡിൻ ഹാവ് ക്ലാസ് ബിക്കോസ് വി ഹാഡ് റാംനവമി ഫെസ്റ്റിവൽ we had a very nice class from bhakti uh, sorry bhanu maharaj uh, i hope everyone attended it or at least heard the recording of it it's very useful for you know the introduction at least okay so we will continue the revision i think binay prabhu is doing verse 11 yes prabhu ji prabhu you want to share your screen or anything no nah, just i put the note and prabhu pat 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 prabhu ji no problem prabhu i'll open the verse on the screen yeah. yes prabhu. whenever you are ready prabhu yeah Hare Krishna Prabhuji. So, Hare. Um, I start from translation. Uh, verse 11. Only one who can learn the process of nations and that of transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full blessing of immortality. Immolat- so, <clears throat> in the mantra 9 to 11 is terms of knowledge and mantra 12 to 14 is terms of worship so uh, mantra is 11 is under um, in the terms of knowledge so here mantra 9 describes the result of the cultivating ignorance and false knowledge and mantra 11 also describes how one must know the relative position of material and spiritual world to transcend the material energy and attain deadlessness so <clears throat> here um, last uh, class uh, we just uh, see the yeah is actually is a uh, mantra nine is vidya like transcendental knowledge and obidha is uh, two things and obidha is nonsense so this and uh, spiritual knowledge is uh, hearing chanting remembrance and worship and material knowledge is eating sleeping mating and defending so this uh, nice diagram you you show the last class for this and um, also like uh, the <clears throat> they they have a para 1 to 5 like they say no one can be materially immortal so pope had nicely uh, uh, explained like everyone has been trying to attain permanent life but the law of nature are so cruel that no one has been able to avoid the and of death no one wants to die 
nor done anyone wants to become old or diseased. The law of nature, however, does not allow anybody immunity from old age, disease, or death, nor has the advancements of material knowledge solved this problem. Material science can discover the uh, nuclear bomb and um, accelerate the process of death, but it cannot discover anything that can protect men from the cruel hand of old age, disease, and death. This is nice part for Prabhupada explain, and it's, it is clear. We we always try to explain, um, try to be uh, immortal some different way. For example, in here also they are given uh, Hirina Kashipu, uh, who is a, a, a bigger, bigger, greater demon in in our our history, um, history spiritual history, and Hirina Hirina Kashipu. But Hirina Kashipu is, is actually wants to immortality. He just pray to Lord Brahma uh, and and very very deep austerity and um, this uh, like uh, one leg and up, and he just uh, please the Brahma and. Brahma appeared on on, on on behind him and say, "What kind of boon he wants?" And uh, but he, when he say, "I want immortality," then Brahma say, "Look, I am not even not immortal. How can I give it to the immortality? Immortality? No one, um, uh, only only um, Vishnu or Krishna give it to him. I have no this this capacity. But uh, if you if you uh, make another boon, I can give it to you." So then Hiranyakashipu was very intelligent and he, some other way, he wants um, some uh, few step by step. Everybody will know that uh, steps. And um, Brahma gave that uh, boon. In that way, Hiranyakashipu uh, think he is immortal because he cannot be die in the uh, stall and jaw and the water and the, uh, the, in the sky and the uh, land and um, day or night and astra and shastra. And um, uh, lots of other way in all the angle, he just uh, make it immortality. But um, uh, that uh, that is not even uh, work uh, because uh, we all are um, immortal. We cannot be immortal. So then, uh, nation of Bhagavan appear like uh, to um, make this uh, uh, like uh, he break this um, thing like Hirnakashipu the immortality. And uh, but if if somebody if somebody wants to please uh, 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 Krishna by devotional service, uh, to uh, through the shastra and gurus um, uh, advice and uh, follow this is very very easy way to attain the uh, uh, going back to Godhead and, and make make the life success kind of other way kind of immortality like you cannot be death and birth. Uh, again, again, and again, like is is uh, this uh, material world, and um, this uh, next uh, para six and seven, uh, they say uh, how to become immortal, leave this world, the knowledge, in the textbook. God comes also and also send professor and material world, and. Publishing to learn. So I'm just um, reading from Prabhupada Parpot. The process by which one goes back to Godhead and different brands of knowledge, and it has to be learned from revealed Vedic scriptures, such as the Upanishads, Vedanta Sutra, Bhagavad Gita, and Srimad Bhagavatam, to become happy in this life and attain a permanent blissful life after leaving this material body. One must study this secret literature and obtain transcendental knowledge. So, yes, in this way, uh, we are clearly understand that uh, if you want a, a, a permanent blissful uh, life, then we have to follow the, our Vedic scripture, like Upanishad, um, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and and all devotional service to uh, Lord Krishna is the, uh, we can get the perfection and go back to Godhead. There is no other way. Uh, even even like if you if you pray uh, if you want to meditation like Hiranyakashipu, 
thousand thousand years, I think sixty years, if I don't wrong, and then uh, sixty thousand years. Like we don't have that capacity, but if very simple way, if we if we uh, do our uh, devotional service uh, under guidance the guru and shastras, then it's very easily to perfect perfection to make the our goal. So like here at Prabhupada also this uh, give the another another um, uh, um, clear um, idea the miseries of this material world start to identity um, indirectly remind us of our in incapability with dead matter. Intelligent living entities generally take note of these reminders and engage themselves in the culture of with the and transcendental knowledge. Human life is the best opportunity for the culture of spiritual knowledge and a human being who does not take advantage of this opportunity is called a Naradhama, the lowest human being. You know? So <clears throat> in this, this way, uh, you give the example is um, uh, Naradhama, like in the Bhagavad Gita's one verse as well. If we do not uh, uh, leave uh, leave the spiritual way or devotional service way, we are we are actually naradhamo. We are our path is not not uh, successful. We are just waste waste our life and time. So then, para eight to ten, so the the path of abhidha and ad Path of Abhidha and advancement of material knowledge for sense gratification of the path of repeated birth and death as exists spirituality in the living entity has no birth of death. Birth and death apply to the owner's covering of the spirit soul, the body death. Uh, compared to the taking of the birth of the putting in the owner's like garments. Still, uh, the, the like um, uh, is uh, Gita give us uh, that uh, example as well. Like when you die, we change uh, like one uh, old um, clothes to the new clothes we born again, and same thing. also tells us same thing. Unless we we are we are giving to uh, uh, go back. We are by by the devotional service. We go back to uh, Godhead. So therefore, the Prabhupada, uh, therefore, Prabhupada also uh, uh, give the another, another idea. So therefore, the cult culture of Vidya or transcendental knowledge of essential for the human being, sense enjoyment in the disease material condition must be re restricted as far as possible. Unrestricted sense enjoyment in this body condition is the path of ignorance and death so it's, it's very clear like if, if we if we do not um, uh, use our our uh, uh, all knowledge like spiritual knowledge not like material knowledge uh, then then our uh, our uh, goal will be will not be successful we will be the janma mitri jara we will be in the cycle like a, a, a Prabhupada give another example like a patient must uh, regain his health before he can truly enjoy sense pleasure again. Thus, the aim is the human life should not be to enjoy a uh, perverted sense enjoyment, but to cure the material disease. He gave the, uh, a good good example as well. For good health, a person should not increase his favor from 105 degrees to 107 degrees, but should reduce the temperature to the normal. 98.6 that should be the aim of human life is 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 very clear here Prabhupada um give the um his, his advice to us and if you follow that then we'll be will be uh will be this our goal now <clears throat> in the para Yes, in, in this section have also this um, Apara Dharma and Para Dharma is mentioned some like Apara Dharma is bodily Dharma and Para Dharma is God Dharma. So 
and then uh, para 11 to 13 is last section the mention is that the path of religion is actually a mint of self realization and economic development or uh, is requirement just to maintain the body in a sound healthy condition a man should lead a healthy life with a sound mind just to realize with the true knowledge which is the aim of the human life this life is not meant for working like an as s or for cultivating obidda or sense gratification so Popad is very clear says the path of vidya most perfectly presented in simas bhagavatam who is direct a human being to utilize his life to inquire into the absolute truth the absolute truth is realized step by step as brahman paramatma and finally bhagavan the personality of godhead so in here also the one example is at last uh, last para say is it is uh, yes sri sri rupa goshami is example in here over mention is says coming from bhakti rasam rita shindu the tasma dekana manusha bhagavan satyatan prati hi srota bhakriti tabho shadheya puja shunitta da is is means therefore with one point of attention one should constantly hear about glorify remember and worship the personality of godhead who is the protector of the devotees saying so the conclusion says unless region economic development and sense gratification aim towards to attainment or devotional service to the lord they are all simply different form of nonsense abidda and sri upanishad in, indicate in this following mantras so in the in the in conclusion uh, we, we we just uh, we can say the all material knowledge we need it to learn maybe a few, uh, few stages or few steps but until or unless spiritual knowledge like vidya real vidya we cannot we cannot go go anywhere and we can come back again and again to this uh, human or um, uh, 8.4 million species so now you give me lots of different uh, different uh, reference so like um, uh, you you say like uh, like Ob obidda have uh, different in here obidda uh, means ignorance as well like uh, as uh, terms of verse 9 also the uh, obidda is uh, one result if don't make another result is uh, times of uh, at, um, verse 10 but um, uh, in this 11 they say <clears throat> side by side you know so in, in conjunction so if you want to the enjoy fully uh, uh and truly then uh, um we have to we have to do the devotional service uh, like original transcendental knowledge this is our note Prabhuji. thank you very much Hare krishna thank you Hare krishna anyone has any questions for Prabhu? for verse 11 Okay, so just in a nutshell, what Prabhu has mentioned based on Prabhupada purport, uh, we have to cultivate both side by side and while we are cultivating material knowledge, because we have to follow Apara Dharma as well while we are here. And once we realize how uh, relatively small this is, then we can value the Apara Dharma more. And as Prabhupada writes in the last line, it's really nice. Unless religion, economic development, and self gratification aim toward the attainment of devotion service to the Lord, they are simply different forms of nascence. This is really nice. Um, I think another place where Rupa says, Our Apra Dharma should lead to Paradharma. Many times our Apra Dharma leads to Adharma. So if we have these three layers Adharma, Apra Dharma, and Paradharma, so Aparadharma, our bodily duties, which we have to follow, that's fine, should lead upwards, which is Paradharma. But many times what happens, because I'm following my Aparadharma, 
have to go to work, I have to look after my kids. So I don't have time to come to temple. I don't have time to do any devotional service. So basically what we are doing from Apra Dharma to Adharma, many times. But ideally it should lead upwards because if we don't do that, as Prabhupada said, they are simply different forms of nations. Simply. Okay, thank you Prabhuji. Um, I'll give it to Madhuri Mataji for verse 12. Mataji, if you want to share your screen, I can stop. Prabhu, I don't have any screen. Uh, okay. The same thing what you have. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. Whatever works, Mataji. Yes. Can I start, Prabhu? Yes, Mataji. Yeah. So, uh, this is um, Ishopanishad Mantra 12. I'll try to uh, break it down into uh, three sections. So, uh, for initially, this uh, I'll give the context. So, uh, chapter, uh, previous uh, mantras, 9, 10, 11, they lead to Vidya and Avidya. This is the same reflection here, 12 uh, mantra, uh, 11, 12, uh, in terms of worship, like 12, 13, and 14 is in terms of uh, worship, whereas 9 to 12 is in terms of knowledge. So, uh, mantra 12, we can compare to mantra 9, and both mantra 9 and mantra 12 say the same things, except one word, which is uh, sambhuta and asambhuta. <laughs> So um, here first we need to understand what uh, Sambhuta and Asambhuta means. So basically Sambhuta is something which is independent which is uh, of its existence. So there is it does not depend on any uh, other uh, forms or energy for its existence. That is Sambhuta and another one is Asambhuta. Asambhuta is something which is dependent on others. So in this context, we have uh, um, Sambhuta as uh, so, so Andham Tama Pravishanti Ye Sambhutam Upasate. So uh, andam tama is like ignore darkness and ignorance. So asambhuta. So the first two lines describe about asambhuta. Asambhuta means which is uh, dependent. Uh, and here asambhuta means uh, it, they are uh, referring to the worship of demigod. So when you worship uh, the demigods, then you will go to darkest regions. And then similarly, when you are worshipping to impersonalism, that is Sambhuta, uh, then that is again independent. So that is independent of its existence. So it is here, uh, they are saying as a Brahman or an impersonalist uh, here, impersonal absolute. They are, if you are worshipping impersonal absolute, then that is, uh, then you will go even more darker in the darkest region of material world. Again, uh, so here there are three sections. We can divide uh, first para one to three. And they are here. Uh, uh, Prabhupada has mentioned about demi how demigods and uh, uh, great rishis and yogis also misunderstand the absolute truth uh, to be impersonal. And uh, uh, second section is demigod worshippers, how they stay in the darkest material world. And then the Third section is para 7 to 10, uh, wherein Prabhupada uh, mentions about impersonalists who mislead people to the darkest region of hell. So first we will understand about um, Sambhuta and Asambhuta. Prabhu, uh, translation. Yeah, Asambhuta here is, the da uh, is for uh, worshipping of demigods. So, worshipping of demigods, it is a uh, disadvantage here is that is in, uh, temporary. The results of worshipping uh, demigods is always temporary and uh, that is the disadvantage. And at the most, you can reach by worshipping demigods to Satya Loka or Brahma Loka. And again, 
once you finish your uh, positive karma, then you will have to come back to the earth planet and again repeat the cycle of birth and death. So there is never a, a chance of getting out of this cycle of birth and death when the, the demigods worship is uh, uh, in progress. However, there is a chance that you can elevate to uh, uh, gradually elevate into the to the real true uh, pure bhakti uh, via demigods because Krishna, the purpose of creating this demigod worship by Krishna is to gradual, gradually elevate to the uh, pure bhakti and then reach the uh, supreme personality of Godhead. But uh, the, there are some examples in our uh, Shastras as well, like Keshava Kashmi Kashmiri. Keshava Kashmiri uh, was a, a devotee of Saraswati, Lord Saraswati, uh, but uh, eventually Saraswati Devi has uh, uh, given him uh, he, a boon saying that whoever you uh, speak to, you will be able to defeat him in this world. So he goes and defeats with his Vok Chaturya about his um, knowledge. And then finally, he reaches to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Mayapur. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very young, he was easily de defeated. Uh, Keshav Kashmir was easily defeated. And then he comes back to Goddess Saraswati. And then Goddess Saraswati says, like, yes, I have given you boot to that you will be uh, winning over uh, anyone in this world. But you have... Uh, uh, competed with master uh, master of my master. My master is Lord Brahma and you have then uh, Kesha Kashmir realizes that uh, Lord Chaitanya uh, form of Krishna and uh, then he becomes the uh, devotee of uh, Lord Chaitanya. Similarly, Vallabhacharya. Vallabhacharya was a great uh, devotee of Lord Shiva and by his uh, uh, by his uh, practice of uh, bhakti towards uh, Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva was very impressed and he asked for the boon uh, he can give to him. Then Vallabhacharya says, whatever is more dear to you, please give me that. And then Lord Shiva gives uh, uh, Lord Krishna's muti to him. And then Vallabhacharya says, what is this one? Then he says, see, the most dear to me is my master, who is uh, Lord uh, Vishnu or Lord Krishna. So, and then eventually Vallabhacharya uh, turns into a Vaishnava. So, uh, Lord Krishna actually provided this worship, the worshipping uh, purpose of creating this demigods under him is first thing is within that region uh, based on conditioned souls level. Some people can go directly, go, in, go to the pure bhakti and some people may go gradually elevate. So conditioned souls has got uh, different levels. Just like in our last uh, class, uh, Hemant Prabhu has explained about the uh, example that one father has got two sons, both has got 60-60% later stake, but one person got elevated from previous exam, 40 marks to 60 percentage. Another one uh, came down from 80 to 60. And then uh, for one son, uh, father uh, appreciates because he was always getting 40% and suddenly he increases to 60%. And another son he chastises because he was 80% uh, and then he gradually decreased to 60%. And so similarly, uh, uh, worshipping demigods is also, we can uh, relate to this one. So people who are from a go godless situation they get, or uh, irreligious forms, at least they get into a religious forms or they start worshipping demigods at least they are in the arena or under the Krishna's uh, shelter but not directly indirectly so uh, he is he is better but again per the conditioned soul who is in a higher level falling down to worshipping demigods is not uh, appreciable so if you are uh, if any conditioned soul he is worshipping demigod Ele gradually they need to be elevated that is the purpose of worshipping the demigod but if we, if a conditioned soul is only worshipping demigod for material desires then um, he will be just uh, revolving around within the material desires he gets whatever he wants and then the cycle of birth and death will be he will never get uh, he never come out of a cycle of birth and death and never get elevated to a pure bhakti or to the absolute truth 
and um, and then uh, demigod uh, worship uh, as i said there are so many um, examples wherein we can get eleva elevated to the pure bhakti as well even though krishna in bhagavad gita he says like demigod worshiping is also my worship however that is not the right way and uh, um again conditioned soul uh, they uh, krishna has created different levels because from one level to another level there will be gradual uh, uplifting so whoever is uh, in the religious forms and uh, but the material gains if they are uh, worshiping demigod then that comes under karma kanda and once that and that leads to eventually that can lead to uh Mm. karma yoga wherein the desires will be still material but however the worship will be towards krishna and then uh, from that it can lead to sakama karma yoga actually and then wherein the uh, results of the action will be still for a material gain uh, however the consciousness will be towards a spiritual uh, way and then the worship will be towards krishna and then from that can lead to a nishkama karma yoga and that is nothing but a buddhi yoga or bhakti yoga wherein the results or the fruits also can will be dedicated to krishna so that is the gradual elevation from one uh, stage to another stage even though if if a conditioned soul is worshiping only demigod uh, the results of worshiping of demigod will be within the material world and then he cannot get liberated uh from cycle of birth and death he may go up to satya loka uh, um, chandra loka surya loka or any demigods loka but that is again temporary again uh, uh prabhu has mentioned right uh, there will be if you put one dollar coin in the thing and then uh, the the kid will be revolving around that um uh, uh, one machine wherein you know he will be uh, and once the time is over then he will come out of that one so what it means is like you know he is finishing his uh, uh uh time positive time and then he will come back again to his uh, uh cycle of birth and death and uh, into a material world so what is the use of going to higher lokas so first uh, two lines which says that worshiping of demigod enter into darkest region of ignorance we understand uh, now based on these um, uh, ideas and then understanding absolute truth is very difficult even great demigods uh, sometimes they have misunderstood understanding the absolute truth to be impersonal and it is not an easy thing only the way with which we can understand uh, supreme personality of god it is by devotional service so doing uh, devotional service and in bhagavad gita it has mentioned that um ap apratihata so it is like so, you know sam prodharu eto bhakti eto akshade ahetuki apratihata ye yatma suprasitati yeah so ahetuki apratihata so constant without deviation uh, focusing on the uh, lord krishna and uh, continuing that is how uh, we can progress towards uh, devotional service and even in uh, chapter 9 um, uh, krishna has mentioned uh, that uh, ananya bhakti and also in uh, we also came across uh, a verse of um, yanti deva pratan deva so what it means is like if you uh, worship demigod you will go into a, a demigod's world uh, loka and if you worship uh, pitra loka you go pitras you go into pitra loka and eventually uh, that is uh, wherever whatever you worship you reach there and uh, krishna also mentioned that that is not the, even demigods worshiping all again it's like worshiping himself but that is not the right way and uh, but when compared to imperson uh, worship to impersonalism uh, worshiping demigod is better like when we see compare first two lines to the next two lines yeah that is what it says uh, uh so uh, asambhuta here is like independent existence so here it is uh, worshiping absolute truth so chaitanya charan prabhu in his lecture he says like you know impersonalism worshiping in impersonalism did uh, we did mention in uh, they they are mentioned in our shastras upanishads 
but as a transformation uh, basically impersonalism can be divided as a mayavadi and uh, brahmavadi so if it is going as a transformation from one level to another level that is good but when you stuck stuck to the transformation as that that itself is an absolute truth that is where is the dangerous problem and prabhupad mentions uh in, uh, in modern day uh, impersonalists, uh, uh, Prabhupada has condemned very seriously because in modern day impersonalism, you know, Brahmavadis, they say like Aham Brahmasmi or they themselves are uh, pseudo regionalists actually. So they are uh, very dangerous because they neither uh, worship demigods nor uh, they. Uh, present um, towards uh, supreme lord because they they uh, pose themselves as their uh, they themselves are the incarnations of god and then they mislead the people and they so this way adv disadvantage of this type of uh, people is that you know again chaitanya charan prabhu has mentioned in his lecture about this one that um, the natural tendency of a soul is to do a devotional service by worshipping impersonalism, they may at the most reach to Brahman. And then what do they do? They're nothing. So that way what happens is the soul is deprived of higher taste of doing devotional service. So when a soul is not getting the higher taste of devotional service, there is very much chance that they come down and get attached to a material life. So that is the most dangerous and more uh, uh, darkest uh, the uh, thing over uh, worshipping the demigods. So the impersonalists, in, they pose themselves as uh, incarnations of God himself and then they lead mislead people and uh, they uh, and also there is uh, some sayings these days they come right Madhava Seva uh, Madhava Seva itself is Madhava Seva so even those cut quotations are, uh, have come from people these days and uh, these all are just misleading people and then that will never lead them to go towards uh, Krishna or uh, reach towards a pure devotional service. And that is even more worse than worshipping demigods because based on uh, our um, uh, history, we can see so many examples who have led from one uh, worshipping demigods ultimately that that can lead to uh, worshipping gradually we can elevate elevate there is a chance of elevating demigods even 0.1 percent like uh, vallabhacharya or um, uh, keshav kashmiri etc they have become a great devotees of the lord and uh, chandidas etc but uh, uh, these uh, if pe people uh, come under the knowledge of impersonalists, then they will go nowhere and that will completely mislead uh, the society and they will go away from the devotional service because impersonalism leads to uh, either mayavad, like everything is illusion or a brahmavad saying that I aham brahmasmi or they will uh, believe that brahma brahman itself is a supreme personality and they uh, deny the pers uh, personal form of uh, Lord, which is the actual uh, absolute truth of the Supreme Personality of God. So, yes, Prabhu. Thank you, Vana. Very nice. Okay. While you're talking, I'm just remembering some examples from Chetan Chetamrit. Maybe we can discuss for the benefit of everyone. So, you gave three examples, Mataji, from Chetan Chetamrit. Valbacharya, okay, not directly, but yeah, Valbacharya is in Chetan Chetamrit. You gave example of Chandidas and you also gave example of Keshav Kashmiri. So these were the devotees of demigods. They became devotees of Krishna. Can anyone give example from Chaitanya Charitamrit? Any impersonalist, very famous impersonalist uh, became devotee. Um, not Madhuri Mataji. Uh, you can later, but yeah, I want everyone to discuss. Rupam Prabhu is about to say something. An uh, impersonalist in Chaitanya Chirtamrat, not Bhagavatam I'm talking. We'll come to Bhagavatam in a second. Just so that we can understand this concept. Mataji mentioned two words. We have discussed in Bhagavad Gita 9th chapter, Brahmavad and Mayavad. We're talking about Brahmavadis here. Mayavadis, are, they are the offenders of Krishna's form. That's why their upliftment is, doesn't happen basically. Huh? And that's what Prabhupada has mentioned here. 
Mayavadis are dangerous. Brahmavadis are ignorant. Ignorant means they don't have knowledge. In Bhagavatam, we see two examples of Brahmavadis. Anyone remembers from Bhagavatam? Yes, Akhanda Saprabhuji? Yes, ma'am. Is it uh, Sarvabhum Bhattacharya? No, 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 Bhagavatam. 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 Uh, yeah, it it's is... Uh, Kumaras um, Prabhu? Or Kumaras. Thank you. And, and Sukhdev Goswami. And Sukhdev Goswami. They were Brahmavadis. As soon as they heard the glories of Krishna, they became Krishna devotees. And from uh, Chaitan Charthamrath, so Akhanda Saprabhuji said one, another one. So Sarvam Bhattacharya, he was an impersonalist and he became devotee of Lord Chaitanya or Krishna. Prakashananda Saraswati, very, very famous. He was the guru of many, many Mayavadi sannyasis. He was not just a sannyasi, he was the guru of sannyasis. And he became devotee. In our um, Radha Gopinath temple, we have a nice picture. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is sitting near the shoe stand and Prakashananda Saraswati is coming and grabbing the hand of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Everyone would have seen that picture. And asking him to come inside. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave a fantastic speech uh, there. And all those uh, Mayavadi sannyasis became, I should say, Brahmadi sannyasis became uh, the followers of Krishna. In Chaitanya Charitamrath, anyone can give an example. So we got example of demigod worshipper coming to Krishna worshipper. We got example of impersonalist becoming Krishna worshipper. Anyone who example of a lower form of Krishna became worshipper of higher form of Krishna in Chaitanya Charitamrath. Mahasa Prabhu. He's, he's about to press a button. <laughs> Mohit Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Did you hear the okay, question, the... Prabhu? Okay. So, we are discussing different examples from Chaitanya Chaitanya just for our understanding. So, we got the example of demigod worshipper who became Krishna worshipper, um, Chandidas, uh, Keshav Kashmiri, and all that. We also got the example of impersonalism, became Krishna devotee, Sarvam, Tacharya, Prakasha, and Saraswati, who is another example in Chaitanya Chaitanya who, who was worshipping a lower form of Krishna and then he became a devotee of the higher or highest form of Krishna. Krishna form. Two brothers. It's within Krishna. Krishna. So that's why I'm, I'm arranging a quotes from various perspectives. Yes, Madhuri Mataji? Two brothers who are uh, wise. Sri Vaishnava Sampadaya. Yes, huh? Mataji. Thank you. Venkat Bhatta. So Venkat Bhatta, he's in Sri Rangam Temple. He's a worshipper of Lakshmi and Narayan. Narayan. Same form of Krishna. There's no problem with that. But then after discussion with uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because he stayed in their house for four months, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked him a, a very valid question, why Lakshmi Devi want to participate in the Rasa Leela? He had no answer. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained, huh? Narayan is Krishna, but Krishna has higher Rasa. As Banu Maharaj was explaining last class, Akhila Rasamrata Murti. With Narayan, the Madhuri Rasa is very, very limited. Sakya is uh, almost uh, not there. But with Krishna, Akhil. Akhil means from all the perspective, perfection of that rasa. Akhil rasa amrita murti. We'll discuss about this word when we reach to NOD. Okay, thank you Madhuri Mataji. Very nicely prepared and read and uh, nice examples. Okay, so let's move to the next verse, um, which is verse 13 and 14. I'll just quickly go to MIHE guide. So we are here at the moment, mantras 9 to 14, the absolute and the relative. Okay, Ujjala Samataji or Prabhuji has a question. Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, it's related to mantra 12. Mantra 12. So okay. I'm talking from paragraph 6. Okay. So here it says, um, outside the universe is the vast and unlimited Brahma Jyoti expansion, which is filled with Vaikuntha Lokas. Yes. So the point is, uh, I thought that uh, the Brahma Jyoti effulgence is just outside the material universe. And then there is a Mahesh Dham. And then uh, out, outside of that is uh, the spiritual world. Because Mahesh Dham, that's where the spiritual world starts. So uh, the spiritual world doesn't require any illumination. So I yes. thought that Brahma Jyoti was just yes. outside the universe. And then, but here the line says, yeah. That the Brahma Jyoti is filled I, with like the locals. I, I think what Prabhupada meant to say, if there's a Prabhupada gave a simple example of a light bulb in all of our rooms, we have a light bulb. So light bulb is emanating this light, 
So there's a light bulb, which is a person, Krishna, and the light from Krishna's emanation is called Brahma Jyoti. So definitely, it is Brahma Jyoti is Krishna's light or effulgence, it's called, but it's not just limited to a layer. You know what I'm saying? So Krishna is in Krishna Loka, emanating all the light. So all the Vaikuntha Loka is also within that light. Is it clear? Okay, so it just yeah. everywhere but so it's not no, just the light mind. at one stage, which is Brahma Jyoti. And before that, you can say light. And within that light, we have all the Vaikuntha planets. And because light is coming. It's not like a layer here. A layer here and then the finishing. Huh? So Krishna is emanating all these lights. So all the Vaikuntha Lokas are there. But there is a layer in that light where there is no Vaikuntha planet that we call as Brahma Jyoti. And then after that, we have material planet. One more thing I think Prabhupada mentioned, uh, Brahman is, is spread everywhere, even in the material world. Because it's Krishna's energy which we are breathing, which we are living in. It's all Krishna's energy. From that perspective, Prabhupada also said once, uh, there is nothing material, everything is spiritual. So what he meant to say, because the source is a spiritual, it's all coming from spiritual source. So although we say this table is uh, dead, it's a matter, our body is matter, mind is matter, but the source is spiritual. So Prabhupada also um, said multiple statements from that perspective, so context-based. Is that okay? Thank you, Prabhupada. Yeah. Okay, let's go to our next verse, 13. Who would like to read 13? It's a small verse. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Anyad eva sambhavad. Anyad eva hu sambhavad. Anyad ahur asambhavad. Anyad ahur asambhavad. Iti sushruma dhiranam. Iti sushruma dhiranam. Yena stat vicha vicha chakshira. Yena stat yena stat vicha chakshire. Translation, translation, it is said that one result is obtained by worshipping the supreme cause of all causes and that another result is obtained by worshipping what is not supreme. All this is heard from the undisturbed authorities clearly explained. Thank, Thank you. Prabhupada. So now as we were discussing earlier, three mantras... 9, 10, and 11 correspond with 12, 13, and 14. So as we are reading 13, so this corresponds with 10. I'll just quickly open 10 and we'll just have a look at some similarities. And then we'll do the 13. So this is verse 10. Anyad eva hur vidyaya. And as we see in our verse here, anyad eva hur sambhava. So the word difference is only sambhavat, asambhavat, vidya, and avidya. So sambhavat, as Madhuri Mataji was explaining earlier, which is independent, the supreme truth, we can say. And asambhavat, which is a dependent truth. Now, basically, these three words are used in all three verses, and in each verse, the meaning is different. So in this particular verse, Prabhupada is saying Sambhavat meaning by worship the Supreme Lord, the cause of all causes. So this is what we see in the first line. And Asambhavat, which is used in the second line, Prabhupada writes the meaning Asambhavat by worshipping what is not supreme. So is it clear? So Sambhavat, Asambhavat, it can be supreme, supremely independent, or um, it can be referring to the spiritual world and asambhat referring to the material world. So in this particular 13, uh, Prabhupada is writing supreme and non-supreme. So let's read the translation. It is said that one result is obtained by worshipping the supreme cause. Let's compare with verse 10. The wise have explained that one result is derived from the culture of knowledge. Exactly same thing, basically, you can say. 13. And another result is obtained by worshipping what is not supreme. Going to verse 10, different result is obtained from the culture of Nisan. So basically same thing is passed here in different terminology. And here Prabhupada talks about those 20 points, if you remember, from Bhagavad Gita. And here Prabhupada is writing about qualified as a bona fide acharya because he is trying to explain this word dhiranam. So dhiranam was also used in verse 10, if you remember. Iti shushrama dhiranam. Iti shushrama dhirana. So shushrama means to hear. He has heard this from who? Dhirana, which is the Acharya. Now what are the qualities of those Acharya? This is what Prabhupada is mentioning. Very beautiful here. Qualities of a bona fide Acharya and different results achieved by different worship. 
Anyone would like to read just this um, yellow highlighted portion? Okay, yes, Shrabuji. Yes, Prabhu. Hearing from undisturbed authorities is approved. Uh, I've also you wanted to. Yes, Prabhu, just this one here. Okay. Never presents anything that is not mentioned in Vedic literature. So basically, what Prabhupada is saying, who is a dhira? Undisturbed authorities. What does undisturbed mean? Anyone can expand on that term? Undisturbed. It's quite cold outside, suppose. <laughs> uh, so what is the result? What does undisturbed mean as per Shastra, as per Bhagavad Gita? What does undisturbed mean? Any definitions, shlokas? Sita Pradnya. Is Sita Pragya? Thank you, Mataji. Ready More or expansion? Huh? Ready or sober. Okay, that's the translation. Itoshna. More expansion? Sukhati. Yes? Prabhu, as Sorry. it is. As unaffected, it is. unaffected by dualities of life. Unaffected by dualities of life. That's the man. And what are the six dualities mentioned in Bhagavad Gita? So second chapter mentions two, four. Sixth chapter mentions six. Second chapter, four dualities. Akhanda uh, Prabhu. Man, yeah. upman, uh, can, you, can you tell me the verse, Prabhuji? Four dualities mentioned in second chapter. Very famous verse. Mm, sorry, I don't Anyone know. else? That's okay. Mataji can help, Prabhuji. <laughs> Shita, Ushna, Sukha, Dukha. Thank you. Verse number? 214. 214. 214. 214. 214. Uh, uh, 2.0. That's a different verse. 214. Matra is for Shastra. Sukha, Dukha, Daha. That is 2.14. So four dualities are mentioned. Now Rupam Prabhu is about to say another two from 6th chapter. 6.7. Anyone remembers two more? Sita, Ushna, Sukha, Dukha. Four mentioned here. What are the two more in 6th chapter? 7th verse. Manapman. Manapman. Jitatma, prama, uh, Jitatma, Samahitaha. Manapman is mentioned. Two more are mentioned. So... Back to Khandra Sat Prabhu's answer. So, one who is not disturbed by these dualities of the material world. Manapman, he is not disturbed. Sita and Ushna, someone is uh, welcoming him very warmly. We say, warm welcome. Hamara garm swagat hua. <laughs> so, we, we all like the, the warm welcome. Huh? But he is, not, he is not bothered. Warm welcome or cold welcome. No one asked me about some prashadam or anything. That's fine. So, Manapman, Sita, Ushna, Sukha and Dukha. Life will throw you so kind of uh, uninvited guest. Huh? They always come. So, but this person is not disturbed about these things. This is called uh, Istita Pragya or Dhira. He is undisturbed. And the, another quality Prabhupada writes here, never presents anything that is not mentioned in the Vedic literature. So he is not uh, doing some mental concoction. As I mentioned, I think in one of the class, there's one very, very famous guru. He says, I have not read Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam. Huh? So he is openly saying these statements. But this is the definition here. If I'm mentioning my own mental concoction, I'm not a bona fide uh, guru. So he presents himself as a very big guru. But that's fine. That's not the definition of Shastra. So this is the qualities of bona fide Acharya. Um, as I think someone was saying, as it is. Huh? He presents the things as it is. Prabhupada said, uh, my God brothers were more qualified than me. That's a Prabhupada statement. But I became very successful. Why? Because I presented the knowledge from my Guru, from my spiritual master as it is. Uh, so that word is very, very important. It's not about the knowledge. Knowledge is about intellect. Uh, someone has more intellect, someone has less intellect. That's not important in a spiritual life. The, the, the important point is, are we... Uh, presenting the knowledge received by our acharyas or gurus as it is, or we are adding some masala to it, uh -huh, which attracts people. I was, uh, I was watching this Abhay Charan, which is made by His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj. Prabhupada, in the very initial days as well, was giving Chaitanya Charitamrit lecture to hippies. And that word. Now, if we speak even to devotees, devotees sometimes don't grasp it. First, we don't know. Second devotee is, uh, you know, don't grasp it. Prabhupada is speaking. Why? Because that knowledge was so pure. Prabhupada was reading from a book. He was reading. I literally was reading from a book. And uh, it was so nice. It was so nice. So Prabhupada was on a different level just because he had full faith in the words of his Acharya. We think I can speak better. 
I know more shlokas. Huh? I have more knowledge. I have better examples. I can make devotees laugh in my class. Sometimes a standard of uh, for higher classes, how much the speaker is making audience laugh. Now, Shukadev Goswami never mentioned even one joke in the whole seven days of Srimad Bhagavatam. Do you see any 18,000 verses, a joke, a, uh, is carrying a joke on the uh, cinema, movies or something like that? Nothing like that. So that is okay to pass the message if, if that's needed for the audience. That's not a problem. Give me examples and making audience laugh. That is not a problem because the speaker is not speaking. He's passing a message. And whatever works for the audience, he can use those examples. That's okay. But that should not become a standard of judging the speaker how great he is just because he's making the slap. This he is a boring speaker. <laughs> That's not the point of Bhagavatam class or Bhagavad Gita class. That relates to our intellect, and that there's no you can't attract Krishna with your intellect. When a milk drinking brahmachari came into that room and trying to watch uh, Mahaprabhu's uh, dance and kirtan. And Mahaprabhu finally kicked him out in the word he used, to hell with my austerity, to hell with my brahmacharya. Huh? By all that, I can't even participate. I can't even see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's dance and kirtan. Hmm? So that's the austerity intellect is not important at all. Bhaktiya mama pichanati. Prabhupada always mentioned that. Huh? Only by bhakti you can know me. Okay, now different modes of worship. Prabhupada gives example 925. I think Madhuri Mataji also slightly mentioned the verse. Anyone remembers the verse 925? Very, very famous Yanti. verse. Yes, Prabhupada. Yanti, Yanti Devan, Vrata Devan. Yanti Devavratan Devan. So Devavrata, Yanti, they achieve Devan. Yes, Prabhupada. Next. Yeah, Pitra, Pitra Yanti. Pitran Yanti. Pitran Yanti, Pitra Vrataha, Bhutani Yanti, Bhuteja. Yanti Mat Yajan Yanti, Yanti Mat, they will achieve me who will do Yajan of me. Thank you, Rupal Prabhu. Teen Sal Peleka Varsi Yade. That's great. <laughs> okay. So, very nice example. Prabhupada quoted it many, many times. Uh, and it's Krishna's word. Prabhupada repeating and saying, if you worship demigods, you go to demigods. If you worship Bhutas, you go to Bhutas. So, not every path will take to one destination. What's the shloka in Bhagavad Gita which people use that all paths leads to Krishna? You've discussed it. Very famous verse, second line of that verse. 4.11 Ye yatha maam prapaddante taam sathai bachamiyam So everyone knows this line. Second line of the or third or fourth, you can say, Mam Vartamanu Vartante, Manushah Parth Sarvashah, Mam Vartava. Vartama means path, Marg. Mam Vartamanu Vartante. So basically, Krishna is saying, um, everyone follows my path, but everyone follows my path does not mean all the path goes to one. Right? So everyone follows my path, like Pacific Highway. I live on Pacific Highway. It goes south and north, both directions, right? If I'm trying to go south, say for me, temple is towards my south, I will go towards south, not north. I will not reach to Vaikuntha Ashram. <laughs> I will go downwards, right? So, although I'm on Pacific Highway, it doesn't matter uh, uh, that I will go to only one destination. No, I can go to very different destination. A person taking alcohol, drugs and all that will not go towards Krishna, will go against Krishna. Although alcohol is also coming from Krishna, meat is also coming from Krishna, drugs is also coming from Krishna. Huh? But they are not taking us towards Krishna. They are taking us against Krishna. So this 925 is very important. And Prabhupada is saying one achieves different results by different modes of worship. Another famous example Prabhupada gave. If you buy the ticket of Calcutta, you reach to Calcutta, not to Mumbai. Huh? Very simple but very uh, effective example. Uh, you sit in a particular train and say, okay, wherever the train goes, I will go to my house. No, it doesn't work that way. You cannot sit in any plane. You will end up um, somewhere else. You want to go to India, you have to buy that specific ticket, uh, go to that uh, boarding gate and then board on the plane and then you reach to India um, after some hours. Okay. Nowhere in authentic scriptures it is said that one will ultimately reach the same goal by doing anything or worshipping anyone. Prabhupada was in India and some Indian gentleman was arguing with Prabhupada and saying, Prabhupada, I don't remember that verse, but that verse says, 
whatever path you adopt, you will reach to Krishna. Whatever you do, actually, he said, whatever you do, you reach to Krishna. Then Prabhupada has said back, then what is the point of Krishna speaking Bhagavad Gita? Right? <laughs> what's the point? If whatever you do, you will reach back to Krishna. Then what's the point of Krishna speaking Bhagavad Gita? Because it, it, it's not important. You can say, Krishna can say, okay, do whatever, you'll come back to me. No, he's talking about modes of material nature. A anyone remembers how many verses Krishna has discussed in Bhagavad Gita, which relates to modes of material nature? We discussed about it earlier. How many verses? 100 verses, around 15% of the Bhagavad Gita is dedicated to modes of material nature. You can imagine how important they are. And Krishna is clearly differentiating the results of being in each mode and then transcending the modes. Okay, here's the example of Calcutta and Bombay. And uh, lastly, Prabhupada says, which is the qualification of the bona fide special master, uh, never presents anything that is not mentioned in the Vedic literature. So Krishna gives this famous verse 4.2. Anyone remembers this verse <laughs> of the screen now? Bhot Purana verse. So this is a very nice verse and Prabhupada is giving this verse for Parampara, disciplic succession, which is very, very important. Krishna himself gives this knowledge, but over the period of time, yoga nashtaha parantapa, that yoga, that knowledge was lost. Okay, uh, para three to four, someone else can read. Oh, can I? Yes, please. Yes. So just read the yellow line or the green one? Just the well. green first, the, the, okay. the theme of the para and then the yellow. Yes, para three and four, do not interpret to correctly understand the message of Lord, follow the path of a bona fide spiritual, sorry, bona fide Acharya like Arjuna in disciplic succession. The Lord clearly told Arjuna, Bhagavad Gita 4.3, that it was because Arjuna was his devotee and a friend that he could understand the principles of Bhagavad Gita. So anyone remembers the verse 4.3, at least the two, two points, which uh, Prabhupada is mentioning this verse. Bhaktosime sakha cheti rahasyad hi etat uttamam. So, two qualities of Arjuna. So, first Prabhupada writes the qualities of dhira, and then Prabhupada writes, How would you adopt that dhira? So, what qualification should have? Bhakta. Bhakta here means favorable attitude. So, we can say we are not bhakta, but we have favorable attitude towards Krishna and sakha or das. Huh? So, we have this favorable attitude for Krishna, and then we can understand the knowledge from bona fide Acharya. And Prabhupada calling Arjun as a bona fide Acharya because Arjun received the knowledge from his guru, Krishna, and then he is able to deliver that knowledge. Para 5. What is the message of Lord? Ultimately, he advises that one gives up all other ways and modes of worship and fully surrendered unto him alone. 1866. Everyone knows that word. So, so we understand the theme here. So, Prabhupada gives the definition of dhira. He gives undisturbed authority, presenting um, not from his mind, always presenting from the Vedas. And then he gives the example of different modes of worship will lead to different destinations. And then he gives what are the qualification of you uh, becoming like Arjun so that he can absorb the knowledges. What Lord is saying, give up every single other base or modes of worship. Now, what is the Shastri proof of Krishna's supremacy? Now, this is very important. Why Prabhupada is putting here? Let's go back to the translation here. One result is obtained by worshipping the supreme and another result is obtained by worshipping what is not supreme. So now, anyone else can argue here, okay, you are saying Krishna is supreme. Where is the proof, right? So you are saying Krishna is supreme. I understand one result will be obtained by worshipping the supreme. But I think that Babaji is supreme or this Devata is supreme, right? So now Prabhupada very intelligently puts very good quotations of proving why Krishna is the supreme. Okay, so we know this 10.8. Everyone knows that. Uh, I think one of those famous verses in the stone. Everyone loves 18.66 and 10.8. Even little kids, they will know 10.8. Huh? Aham sarvase prabho, matta sarvam pravartate, iti matva vajante maam, buddha bha sangmita. So Krishna says very clearly, now you say, it again it can be argued, okay, Krishna is saying that. But where else it says in Vedas that Krishna is the supreme? 
So now here looks the example of Veda. So Gopal Tapni Upanishad. I'm not going to read that. It's all in the purport. You can read it. Gopal Tapni Upanishad. Now Upanishad is a part of Veda. Okay, my question. Upanishad is a part of Shruti or Smriti? Who can tell that? Upanishad is a part of Shruti or Smriti? That's a question. Shruti. Shruti, pakka? Why? Why, Mataji? Because it was passed in disciplic succession and it was heard. And then okay. only Ved Vyas, uh, he, he wrote it down and uh, divided the Vedas into four parts. Thank you. Thank you. So this is correct answer. Sorry, I was just trying to confuse you. Uh, Shruti and Veda, sometimes they interchangeably used, although Shruti has more branches as well. So these Shruti is listened from Krishna, from the Supreme Absolute Truth and written as it is. Now, no one can argue there, right? That's why we are reading Isha Upanishad. So there are many, many Upanishads, as we discussed, some say 108, some say 200, anyway, some say 1000, more 1000, anyway. So these are main eight Upanishads, which we discussed in the beginning of the Isha Upanishad. Gopal Tapni Narayan Upanishad is one of those main Upanishads. So Gopal Tapni Upanishad has he who existed before the creation of Brahma and he enlightened Brahma with Vedic knowledge is Lord Sri Krishna. Now who can argue this um, sentence? This is from Shruti, this is from Vedas. Narayan Upanishad. Supreme person Narayan desired to create all living beings. That's from Narayan. Brahma was born. Narayan created all the Prajapatis. Narayan created Indra. He created Vasus, 11 Rudras, and 12 Adityas. Narayana Upanishad 1 and 4. So Prabhupada is quoting. You can imagine how intelligent and scholarly Prabhupada was. Now, he didn't have Google those days. Huh? He had all these things in his mind. Huh? Some references, some books he had. Now, for us, even reading is difficult. Prabhupada was quoting um, when he's you know, awake whole night, writing all these translations. Narayana Upanishad 4 also states, Devaki's son Krishna is the Supreme Lord. Now, this is the Shruti or Vedic example, you can say. Now, he is talking um, Atharu Veda, Maha Upanishad 1. Only Narayan exists in the beginning when neither Brahma nor Shiva nor fire, water, stars, sun, moon existed. Lord does not remain alone, but he creates as he desired. Huh? So, all this uh, Upanishadic or Vedic example he gives. Now, he gives example for Moksha Dharma. Moksha Dharma is a part of which literature? Ujjala Samataji. You, you, you said the first answer, so I thought you were saying. Moksha Dharma, Divya Mataji, is a part of which Vedic literature? It's not your exam questions. I'm just talking uh, just for interaction purpose. Moksha Dharma comes in Mahabharat. Mahabharat is which Vedic literature? Shruti or Smriti? First thing. Smriti. Mahabharat. Who said Smriti? You pakka? Smriti? Not Shruti? Yeah. Smriti, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a story actually. Yes, that's a Smriti. Now within a Smriti, we have Itihas. You remember Itihas? And there, how many Itihasas are there? Simple question. Two. One is Mahabharata. Another one is Ramayana. Right? Ramayan. Very simple. So Moksha Dharma is a part of Mahabharata. So this example is in Mahabharata. Basically, what uh, Prabhupada ji is doing first, he gave Vedic example, and now he is giving. Um, Smriti example, Itihas example. So within Smriti, he gave Itihas. I created the Prajapatis and the Rudras. They do not have complete knowledge of me because they are covered by my illusory energy. Now within Smriti, he gave Itihasic example. Now he is giving Puranic example. See, Prabhupada just covering the whole spectrum basically. Varaha Puran says, Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and from him, four-headed Brahma was manifested as well as Rudra. Now, what are the proof you need? Huh? Shruti example, Vedic example, Itihas example, Puranas example. So, Prabhupada covered the whole spectrum within this, you know, 10, uh, 6 uh, paragraphs and saying Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. And he gave Bhagavad Gita example as well, which everyone appreciates Bhagavad Gita, even if they don't consider Smriti, but they, they appreciate Bhagavad Gita. So, Prabhupada covers all that. And then he gives another very strong example of Brahma Samhita 5.1. Anyone remembers 5.1? Very simple one. Now, oh, Sukhu so is speaking. Ishwara Parama Krishna Sachidananda Vikra Nati Radhir Govinda Sarva Karana Karana. Thank you. So, that's a 5.1. <clears throat> so, why it's called 5.1? Brahma Samhita has 100 chapters. The chapter which we have available is the fifth chapter. 99 chapters of Brahma Samhita are lost. 
So we only have one chapter available. That's why we call it 5.1. So there is another uh, 99 somewhere. Okay. So How then, do we uh, know there were 99? 100 um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was in South India Yatra, so he went to this place, which I don't remember the name of. Um, there they had this one prati, one copy, handwritten copy of Brahma Samhita. And these uh, pujaris, I, I should say the community, will chant this fifth chapter whole, every day, fifth chapter. So from there, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu hand wrote the copy of Brahma Samhita and came back to Bengal and distributed. And then he said, there are total 100 chapters which Brahmaji prayed to Krishna, but we have only one available, which is fifth chapter. So that's where we get the knowledge. And actually, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave us Brahma Samhita, handwritten. I don't know whether that still exists. Maybe Indradu Maharaj would know. He has a whole library of it. But uh, yeah, that's why we call it 5.1. Okay, let's move and, to the uh, next. Prabhu, we, yes. every day we recite uh, Govinda Madhi Purusha, even that is from Brahma Samhita, right? Yes, right? yes, definitely, definitely. So we have one chapter, which we read, fifth chapter, which we have, whole chapter we have. Yeah? But I'm saying the other 99 chapters are not available. Like Bhagavad Gita has 18 chapters. So Brahma Samhita has 100 chapters. So now suppose Bhagavad Gita's only fifth chapter is available. So that has 28 verses. So we have around 55 verses in the fifth chapter, which we read. Some yajna is happening, then we read those whole Brahma Samhita. Okay, 9 and 10, who will read this? Who will understand that Krishna is supreme? Many people don't understand. They will argue with you back and forth without any... I can read it. Yes, Mataji, please. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, para 9 and 10, hearing with faith and love from Dhira Acharya, give conviction of Krishna's supremacy. One who has no faith or love for Lord Krishna cannot be convinced of this simple truth. Those who are faithless are described in the Bhagavad Gita 9.11 as madas, fools, um, sorry, muras, fools or ass, asses. Can you remember 9.11? This, I think, exam verse, I'm not sure was it the list, but very famous verse. Avajananti maam mudha. Avajananti, they do not know me. Huh? Mudha, they are called mudha. But why they do not know me? Because they don't have faith in Krishna or uh, bona fide spiritual master. Huh? They will not have faith. No matter what uh, praman you give them, what evidence you give them, they will not have faith in your words. They say, no, no, my Babaji is the Bhagavan. Uh, in um, Prabhupada's serial verses, Ram Krishna Ram Phalgu Bhagwan. Bhakti <laughs> uh, Thakur had to deal with this Phalgu Baba. So the people used to call him Ram Krishna Ram Phalgu Bhagwan. So Phalgu is our Bhagwan basically. Yeah, so there are so many Bhagwan, especially coming from Indian background. Um, they consider, but they are called Murhas. They don't know anything about Krishna because they don't have faith and love. Okay. Mataji, one more line. Arjuna worshipped the Lord by fighting with his so-called relatives. In, and in this way, he became a pure devotee of the Lord. Well, you may be able to surprise that uh, how come someone fighting and becoming a pure devotee through that act? Usually, puja is considered a very sattvic, very peaceful um, person has to not even speak uh, uh, harsh words, what to speak of having harsh actions and here Arjun is killing. Huh? So Krishna is basically saying here, uh, becoming a pure devotee does not mean just one stereotype person is a pure devotee. One who surrenders to the desire of Krishna, that is a pure devotee and that surrender is the most difficult part of the jiva because we all have our own plans, right? And when we, someone tries to change our plans, do we like it? No. <laughs> Sunday, Maharaj is here. Please come for Bhagavatam class. No, Sunday I'm going for a match. How can I come to temple? <laughs> we don't like to change our plans. Whatever, small or rubbish it, they may be. But uh, if we have faith in the words of Acharya, then we are happy to change our life as per our Guru, as per our Acharya. And then they can make us a pure devotee. Prabhupada was once uh, upstairs and he was very happy. And he was coming downstairs my Guru Maharaj said in a class, actually, I still remember in Sydney. And he make a, Guru Maharaj said, a pirugat. Pirugat is some sort, like, like a shape he made from the hand. Like, you know, we make some sort of shape. And Prabhupada said, 
uh, to his disciples with very happiness. And he said, my Guru Maharaj made me a diamond. He said that. Guru, my Guru Maharaj made me a diamond. Huh? I was useless. But because I followed his instructions as it is, my Guru Maharaj made me a diamond. So he wasn't appreciating me as I'm diamond. Like say, my Guru Maharaj. He was so happy in, in saying that. Huh? So Kadam Karan Maharaj was saying, my Guru Maharaj made me a diamond because I followed his instructions as it is. So uh, it's just nothing to do with our intellect. It's, it's to follow the instruction. Um, speaking to someone recently, can't remember, Shuva Krishna Prabhu, uh, he mentioned very nice thing. He said, uh, whatever little service my Guru Maharaj uh, gave me or sort of instructed me, and he said, uh, Bhakti Charu Maharaj, he said, uh, do it very nicely. Do it very nicely. So whatever service is given to Jhadu Marna, huh? you want to, you know, mop the floor or uh, broom the floor, do it very nicely. That is the perfection of devotional service. It's not like Jhadu to koi bhi mar sakta, you know, anyone can uh, mop the floor. I am an intellect. I need to read something. No, you may be uh, intellect, but if Guru is saying Jhadu Marna hai, Kapda Dona hai, you have to do that perfectly. And by doing that perfectly, you will uh, meet Krishna. And we have the example of Dukhi Krishna Das in Vrindavan who was doing jhadu for Jiva Goswami. He was getting water from Jamuna and he had darshan of Srimati Radharani uh, while he was uh, brooming that floor uh, of that uh, jungle. So it's not about how intellect we are. It's about how surrendered we are to Krishna and to the instructions um, given by Krishna or his representatives. Okay, so Arjun became pure devotees by following the instruction of Krishna because Krishna was saying, you know, um, oh Partha, Krishna's desire was, Partha, you fight. Partha said, okay, no problem. Radha Vain Maharaj said once very nicely, he said, Arjun was not sure he understood the Bhagavad Gita clearly or not. Arjun was not sure, but he was sure about the Krishna's desire, right? How many chapters are there? How much is Karma Yoga, Gyan Yoga, Stang Yoga? Now you have done all Bhagavad Gita. I'm not sure how much you understand. I don't understand much, to be honest. <laughs> it's complex. But Maharaj said, Arjun did understand one thing. What was that one thing? What is Krishna's desire? What is Krishna's desire? To fight. And then Lal Goyal Prabhu said, so, batao kisko pehle udana hai. <laughs> he picked up his ganti when he said, batao kisko pehle udana hai. Huh? Who do I shoot first? Huh? So, whether you understood Bhagavad Gita, whether you got, you know, 95% in your Bhakti Shastri, in Bhakti Vaiba, it's nice and you should achieve that. <laughs> but the more important thing is to understand the desire of your master. And then if you follow that, Prabhupada writing here, Arjun became pure devotee by killing people. His own relatives, not only just killing people, huh? his own relatives, he became a pure devotee of Lord. So, very nice point Prabhupada is mentioning here. Okay. Um, I think second last paragraph someone else can do who hasn't done as yet. Mana Abhishtam. Mana Abhishtam. Thank you, Mata. Sri uh, Chaitanya Mana Abhishtam. Thank you, Mata, for reminding that verse. So, who understands? Rupa Goswami understands the mind of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We can't do that. <laughs> we don't even understand our own mind sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> I get angry sometimes on my own. Like, what is happening? Anyway. Please, uh, who is doing that? Can I do both? Yeah, sure, bro. Yes. Para 11 to 13. Since Krishna is supreme real welfare, work is done by teaching soul to surrender to and worship Krishna. Uh, according to the Vedanta Sutta, Sambhuta is the source of birth and sustenance, as well as the reservoir that remains after inhalation. Janmadi Asya Yata, Srimad Bhagavatam 1.1.1. So we understand that one, right? So Vyasadeva is doing the very first verse. Krishna is Swarat. Janma Adi Asya Yatha. Huh? So who is, who is the source of everything and everyone? And as we were discussing earlier, he is not dependent on anything. He is supremely independent. And that is um, Krishna Vasudev. Okay. Not Vasudev, Vasudev. Um, okay, next one, Prabhu. Gita 7.26. Yeah, Bhagavad Gita 7.26 that he is fully conscious of past, present, and future, and that no one, including demigods, 
such as Shiva and Brahma knows him fully. Anyone remembers the 726? Vedaham samtitanani vartamanani charjuna bhavishyani cha bhutani maam tu vedna kashan. So I know vartaman, bhavishya and bhuta. Maam tu vedna kashan. But no one knows me. I know everything. No one knows me. Huh? That's a very nice reference Prabhupada Ji is giving um, from Bhagavad Gita. And demigods, even Shiva and Brahma, don't know him fully because they have come from him. They also know him in part. Okay, next one, Prabhu. So-called spiritual leaders is something like pouring water on the leaves of a tree instead of the root. The natural process is to pour water on the root. But such disturbed leaders are more attracted to the leaves than the root. Despite their perpetually watering the leaves, however, everything dries up for want of nourishment. Yeah, so we know, uh, I'll just read one more line, Prabhuji, which Prabhupada is writing. Certainly yeah. half-educated spiritual leaders who are disturbed by the tides of material existence cannot know him fully. Huh? Half-educated spiritual leaders, even today's so-called spiritual leaders, again, we are not saying to everyone, um, they are only half educated. They know only part of the knowledge. Even the spiritual leaders, what to speak of the other leaders who has practically no knowledge about spirituality. And they get disturbed. And then they call, I think Madhuri Mataji was mentioning earlier, um, Manav Seva hi Madhav Seva hai. Huh? So Manav Seva, if you serve Manav, then you can serve Madhav. So basically, it has a whole history how it came. And Chaitanya Chan Prabhu has very nicely explained that I'll not go into the whole history. But basically, we can discuss a few points uh, so we can have a quick two minutes or few minutes discussion. So who, who wants to go in the Manav Seva uh, group? Please raise your hand for the effort. <laughs> and one can go in Manav Seva group and we can just raise few points. Please unmute yourself. There will be little noise, no problem. We are here to just mention one, one point quickly. So why you consider Manav Seva is important? Why you consider Manav Seva? So first we'll go Manav Sevas. <laughs> So, Vinay Prabhu, which group you are in? Manav Seva or Madhav Seva? I need five Manav Seva first because everyone will go to the Madhav Seva. <laughs> you have to stay uh, against. So, basically, you have to say why Manav Seva is important, not Madhav Seva. Okay, Vinay Prabhu, jaldi jaldi. <laughs> I'm going for Madhav Seva, Prabhu. Madhav Seva, okay. I need for Manav Seva. Five I'll, people. I'll go for Manav Seva. Manav Seva. Thank you, Prasanna Atma Prabhu. He is a man. <laughs> okay. So just for the matter of um, participating, I will go for Manav Seva, but Thank I you. believe in Manav Seva. That's okay. I don't care. Ma Manav Seva. Yeah. Manav Seva. So Charu Mata Ji is there. Divya Mata, aapka konsa group hai? Ek choose karna hai. You cannot stay neutral. <laughs> yes, Prabhu. Manav Seva. Prabhu. Manav Seva. Kya baat hai? <laughs> Manav Seva. Manav Seva. Okay. So Manav Seva wale aage. Manav Seva Prabhu, Charu Mata, Prasanna Atma Prabhu, Madhuri Mata Ji. Ek aur. Ek aur, kon aar hai? Who is that I'll daring? Change. Rupam Prabhu, okay. Thik hai, baki sa Madha Seva, prepare your points. We're going to beat this group, okay? Prasanna Atma Prabhu, you have one point. Why Madha Seva is more important than Madha Seva? Anything which like, comes to your mind. Yeah, like, you know, someone who is... Uh, uh... Just Prabhuji, one thing, sorry. Uh, Madha Sevas, can you start writing the points which Prasanna Atma Prabhu is saying or others are saying? We have to defeat it, okay? So please take your pen and paper. We yeah, no, in, the, in this world to lead our material life, we need some, you know, food shelter and all these things. So someone who gives education to a kid or something brings him up. So that is uh, Manav Seva, like okay. another point that Very helps nice. him to lead his own life. Okay. 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 You got the point. Others. Someone is writing. Who is writing? So everyone is writing or no one is writing. <laughs> everyone thinks someone else will write. Mahasa Prabhu, you can write quickly. Yes, Mataji is writing it. Mataji is writing it. You are sitting in a calm way. Good, good, good. No, okay. because she is from Madha Seva and I am from Mano Seva. That's why. Achha. Prabhu, you don't need to be in the house. After class. Ke baad. Okay, Charu Mata. If you, if you can't do Manav Seva, then Madhav Seva is impossible. Oh, wow, the deep point. If you cannot do Manav Seva, you cannot do Madhav Seva. Okay. Why you are saying that, Mataji? Um, because, because to serve requires a lot of humility. And to serve human beings requires utmost humility. 
<laughs> okay. I can feel your pain. <laughs> okay, that's nice. She's always very honest, Mata. <laughs> okay. Yes, Mata. Anything else you want to add? You require humility to serve humans. Okay. Yes. So if we can acquire the humility to serve humans, then we can okay. then we can have the not the humility then probably our we become uh, we can uh, we can serve the lord who is the controller very easily and more efficiently if we can Great. if we can cooperate with each other and serve each other then cooperating with the lord yeah. becomes yeah. easier but i think mother your topic is your topic is माधव सेवा ही सब कुछ है हाँ पर अगर हम मानव सेवा मानव सेवा ही सब कुछ है आपका अगर मानव सेवा नहीं कर सकते तो हम माधव सेवा कभी कर ही नहीं सकते बट यहाँ पे पॉइंट वो नहीं है पॉइंट है जरूरत ही नहीं है दैट्स अ पॉइंट बेसिकली ऑफ डिस्कशन और ग्रुप्स वी वी सेव वी डोंट you are okay. saying basically your group is saying माधव सेवा is not important at all yeah. only oh. मानव सेवा is important that's what the yeah. crux is Okay, Madhav Seva, Manav Seva. I'll come back in we'll come five back. minutes. No problem. Next one. Kone, Kone has group me out. I forgot. Madhuri Mataji, your point. Okay, Madhuri Mataji. Now that we know that uh, Dukkalaya Masashvatam, we all are here in this world and we are suffering. We know all this knowledge. So who are more in uh, need? It is humans. Souls are more in need of help than Krishna. So support, helping souls to reach to uh, super soul is what is more important. So Sorry, this is again? my point. Uh, helping helping soul? souls, yeah, helping souls is more important to reach super soul. Okay. And okay. yeah, and Krishna definitely wants all the souls, jivas to come to him in a purest form. So uh, but, but if we help each other, Manav Seva, that is how we will be able to elevate together and reach to Krishna. So this is very but, important. But again, you are not saying that I need to reach to Krishna. Basically, no, the Manav people Seva, who... he, no, Manav Seva, he, Madhav Seva. Seva. So, but they are Manav... not saying we have to reach to Madhav. That's the point. They they want to no, ignore no. Madhav. No, Completely. Prabhu, we are not ignoring. Like, we are ignoring in here is devotional service we are ignoring in my argument see helping a jiva uh, in even in material world but the the thrust of the topic is how it came in bengal originally that i don't need to go to temple i don't need to offer some bhoga all i do i serve daridra narayan on the street i feed him or her and that's it I don't need to go to temple. Why you are worshipping this stone or statue? He can't even fly a fly from his body. If a fly is coming on a statue, the, the deities will not say fly or go away fly. A chuha no, comes Madhav in. Seva hi, Madhav Seva. So when you serve humans, that, in the, that means that you are say, serving Lord. But, but as that's well. the intention here of saying yeah. that is hmm. Daridra Narayan ko serve karna hai. You are serving Daridra Narayan and that's it. There's no next thing. So I'm just being very clear on the topic itself. Yeah. Otherwise, we are connecting. And there is no connection. That's the biggest problem. It's the biggest problem. If I serve, you know, these poor people, some chicken curry and rice, I'm doing such a great service. You go to temple? So many beggars are dying and you're, you're bathing your Lord Shiva in milk. Why don't you give this milk to these poor children? So yes, stop, stop, my stop argument this, uh... is the same thing. Like, you know, Dukkhalaya Masashvatam, the fact that we are here, that means we are suffering. So, jivas or uh, humans are more in need of uh, help. So, I think but with that realization, we need to help people. No, they are speaking. I want some opposing party, fully opposing. Satya Bhama Mata, you be ready with opposing argument. The name is Satya Bhama, opposing. <laughs> Prabhu, but I am on Madhav's side. Oh, yeah. Madhav's side. Yes, I can't Prabhuji. And Bhakti Vijay Mataji is making note of all these points and every one of you have to defeat one one point. Hare Krishna, I just changed the side. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of Manav Seva because that is the need of the hour. People are suffering and in great need of help. So that is the topmost priority of the world. 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा ओके और कोई पूछना है हाँ जी रुको मैं पूछ रुको यस बताइए प्लीज बताइए प्रो आई थिंक आई डोंट नो इफ इट्स गोइंग टू बी लिंक्ड और नॉट बट लेट्स सी दिस बॉडी इज गिवन बाय कृष्णा राइट तो अगर शरीर है तो ही आप भक्ति करोगे सो फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज टू लुक आफ्टर योर शरीर फर्स्ट पॉइंट टू डू इज मेकिंग श्योर दैट माई शरीर अदर्स शरीर एंड एवरी वन शरीर इज इज ऑन ट्रैक सो एंड आई कैन ओनली डू दैट by having compassion and humility and all those buzzwords which are you know, the first thing you learn in in spirituality okay. so keeping that in mind manav seva seva is higher comes at a hierarchy over hierarchy. manav seva we are all talking about hierarchy not opposing so we hindustani hai prabhu i can one yes, point i can think of is um that serving others just helps us create strong bonds um and you know that saying no man is an island so it's hard to live alone by yourself mm -hmm. therefore um serving someone and creating that bond to live in this society is very much required mm -hmm. rather than serving krishna whom we can never see so we serve the people we can see Mm -hmm. and we live because we need to live with them and we create we want to create a bond with them because we cannot live alone okay and therefore um there is no point in serving someone we cannot see very good nice okay let's start uh, reverting it back so who wants Prabhu, to go sir, first there is got a point from manav yes beta please bataiye um i've heard in bhagavad gita that krishna said If you serve my devotees, I get more pleased than if you serve me. Okay. Yep. That's a very good point. Uh, this is Mahabharat. Uh, just one point I want to add, Kaveri here. So he's talking about my devotees who are serving basically me. But what we are talking in this particular discussion, when uh, people who are not serving Krishna, if we serve those people, then we don't have to. Some people say like that. Then we don't have to serve Krishna or his devotees. So that's our topic. So what you are saying is absolutely correct, but that's uh, from Krishna and his devotees' perspective. But what we are talking today here, the people who do not serve Krishna and they say, "I don't want to serve Krishna because I am serving another human being." I'll give you one example for you to understand. When you go to Bunnings, uh, you know they 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 have this uh, barbecue or something like that. You get such a bad smell. <laughs> you have to run around the uh, stairs somewhere to go up so they are collecting money to treat sick people but how they are collecting money by killing animals doesn't make any sense they kill one person and they want to treat another person so we are talking about those group of people here yes. who do not believe in god or service to god and they say yes yes i am raising money for sick people and i am a very good person so that's the people we are talking not the devotees huh? but yeah very good point uh, that's the way back to godhead um, okay let's start uh, prabhu, prabhu there is one argument one argument maybe maybe you take it i'm sorry for that uh, is it for the madhav seva or manav seva it's it's for it's for manav seva manav seva okay bhakti <laughs> vijay mata ji okay. make a note <laughs> yes prabhu <laughs> okay yes okay so Agar, last point and then we'll be about it yeah, right yeah, because we if, only have if, if if madhav seva is that important right considering mano seva is very inferior then there should not be any doctors because doctors are the one who are doing a lot of mano seva right and if 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 doctors don't there then what is your mother going to do oh wow doctors okay, i'm sorry you. but no, it just no, it just no, no, thought no. i'm giving i sorry. want to he listen With very any, extreme argument sorry sorry no no offense I to anyone actually i haven't listening. heard any any extreme as yet sab devotee hi bol rahe hain you play a role I Prabhupada also played a role of impersonalist, and he was fully impersonal. No one could defeat Prabhupada. Anyway, let's start. Vijay Mataji, if you could read the first point, whoever raised that. Um, food shelter education um is very important to human beings. So that's um basically that's why you need mothers. Mana seva Manas is very Manas. important. Food shelter. Uh, okay. Who who will respond that? Anyone? Priya Mata. Can you counteract that point in terms of Madhav Seva? Um, sorry. So that was the uh, the point was that uh, food shelter is very roti kapda makan is very very important. Why do you need Madhav Seva? 
I think that's what this person meant. Whoever is that? I think it is um para. Prasannatma Prabhu ji. Prabhu ji, if I'm misinterpreting, you correct it. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, Roti Kapra Makan is important so that we help kids getting education and so they can yeah, get those Roti Kapra Makan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Go for it. Um, there's a reason why I was not in the debating team at school. <laughs> Everyone has to say it. Uh, That's what I'm saying. So whoever was sleeping, everyone should be awake now. Uh, <laughs> if we give the Lord's service, then we will get the Lord's service. Where will we get the Lord's service? We give the Lord's service. 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 Then, Mate Ji, we give the Lord's service. Hare Krishna, just one second. Just one person at a time, please. Otherwise, it will become a khichdi. Prabhu, why don't we finish in Gaza Strip? Let Divya Mata finish and then we can come to the next person. Otherwise, we will not be able to understand any argument. Divya Mata, please continue. From Akashwani. No, no, Mata Ji, now you say something else. You said that if you look at it, it will go to me. Why are you not getting in Gaza Strip? They are bombing so much. They are dying there. Where are they dying? Where are they dying? Why are they not giving food? Why are they not giving food? I was going to say something um, in support to yes. um, Charu Mataji as well, Prabhuji, that um, like, you know, one particular religion, because as Mataji said, it means streets of Gaza. Um, and the, the whole thing, their um, austerity is, evolves around food, shelter, education, um, to humans and then as you said like you know they kill one person and then they um in the name of austerity in the name of religion they put big big posters like you know your dollar can help um some children on the street to like you know get this and that but then eventually what they're promoting is to kill more and more or making more greed um society it's a greed in society not actually love towards the God. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Anyone else wants to add something? Gaza is a good no, example. The, it's a very current in example. Poor and shelter, yes, Prabhuji. So in, terms of, in terms of poor and shelter, like Prabhu is saying, is Mana Savasya God. But if we take example of Prabhupada, like he was doing Madhav Seva. He was making temples. And when we have a temples, people are coming and worshipping. They have a shelter, they have food, we're doing prasharam distribution, you know, so there is, Prabhupada using Mother Seven, so that everyone is getting food, they have a shelter, accommodation to live, if you come into that process, but if you don't want to, then you are a part of the Mother Seva, you know, because you don't want to come into the Mother Seva. And but, other but, example, but, we but, can but see... Prabhu, you are collecting money from people who are not into that, to run that. For Mother Seva, Prabhu. Correct. For Madhav Seva, you're taking money from the person who is for Roti Kapoda Makan ke liye, oh, kaam kar rahe bahar. Usse paisa le rahe. Prabhu, usse ke through wo Madhav Seva mein involve karenge unko. Ne, wo, us, usko zarurat nahi hai. He doesn't want that. Prabhu, hum sabko hi zarurat nahi hai. Lekin jab hum Seva... Ne, ne, I'm, I'm just arguing. But, I'm saying this, this he's giving you yes. but he, 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 without giving also, he will sustain. He will take care of I support, I, I support he, person. He has education, he has job, he will take care of himself. Yes, I support like Prasanna Alan Musk. Prabhu. Alan, if you take Alan Musk, he is an atheist. He doesn't believe in God. He said, I can take care of myself. I can give jobs to anyone. So he is the number one in the world. So he is an atheist. Okay. I support I, I support Prasannatma Prabhu in saying that, Mataji, just for an argument to you, if you are so good, then why are you taking money from all of them? Why are you taking money from all of because he is merciful, but he is giving chance. No, Madhavi, but you are taking money from the people. So, you are taking money from the people. Madhavi is giving money. This is our fault, which we think that we are taking money from the people. Actually, it is Madhavi. Aham Sarvasya Prabhu. People have forgotten the Ishavasya principles, so they don't realize who is providing actually everything. Okay, nice point. Taking from Krishna and giving back to him. Yep. And so Bhagavatam gives, I'm just adding one and there's so many things coming to my mind. Yatha tarod mul nishe chanena. Prabhupada gives an example. We need to give water to the roots of the tree, not to individual leaves. 
how many leaves you can water and even if you water leaves the plant is not going to survive just watering the leaves our roots has to be nourished okay let's take the second point vijay mata prabhu can i add something else yes, it's yes. very harsh but god sends disasters <laughs> we send relief <laughs> hare krishna hare krishna very nice i really like this actually you know now she is coming into that mood <laughs> god send disasters and humans send the relief very nice even our indrudu maharaj goes to sri lanka and he helps huh? thank you no it's a nice point very nice point that's Prabhu how we should argue actually the, when we have to argue we when we are ravan we are ravan like in in play obviously when we hiranyakashipu be hiranyakashipu otherwise maza nahi aata hai natak mein <laughs> thank you mata uh, this point was made because there was there is avidya uh, once uh, people understand what vidya is and actually who is responsible for getting all this suffering then such people would not make these statements ab bataiye nehle pe dehla ekdam bold hai ekdam bold hai very nice aur koi acha theek hai vijay mata ji go to the point too please um the second one is charu mata ji's point if you can't make manavs if you can't do manav seva then mother seva is impossible if you can't do manav seva then mother seva is impossible very nice point kon bolega Vinay Prabhu is uh, Aram says silently sitting. Just express your mind, Prabhu. It's nothing right or wrong. There is no public session. We are just in the family discussing few things. Just to open. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Yes, yeah, uh, that's that's a uh, materially yes, all right. Uh, if you do manav seva, but if the manav have a uh, super soul inside, is all right. But uh, spiritually, it doesn't work much. Uh, spiritually, we have to serve a mother. uh because uh, if you uh, please uh, krishna everything will be uh, uh, successful that's uh, as per shastras and um, otherwise not but uh, um, uh, we can we can avoid the uh, man of seva but the main target will be the madhav seva in in, in there we you have to serve um uh, you know like our or even even our family uh, we have to we have to take care of and all our son daughter relatives we already already served them is okay but uh, our main target main target will be the serve the krishna the mule the, the water should be in that mool not in the leaves but we cannot avoid that we, we have to you know this material life we have to uh, serve uh, the manav as well okay um priya mata you want to add something on that um hmm, on that like the main my my man was like uh, more towards the manav seva i mean in terms of like um we just discussing that point mata ji so we just maintaining uh, that point and we just try to argue mm-hmm. back so vijay mata ji made a point we just trying to counter that basically okay okay from madhav seva group Okay, Sundar so Gopal Prabhu. If you want to counter that, let's stick to one point. Then we can discuss other points. Otherwise, it will be a discontinuation. Yes. Uh, so, Bhakti Vijay Mata Ji's point is clear to you. Actually, I forgot Mata Ji. Please. If you can't do Mana Seva, then Mada Seva is okay, impossible. If you can't do Mana Seva, then you can't do Mata Seva. Okay, that's the point. So please just try to argue back this point. Don't add another one. Otherwise, uh, we'll lose the focus. प्रभु सारी लाइफ हम मानव सेवा कर करके कर करके सबको प्लीज करके अल्टीमेटली दुख ही मिलता है चाहे वो अपना परिवार हो चाहे कुछ अल्टीमेटली लास्ट में माधव ही याद आता है सबको करके देख लो आप मानव सेवा जिंदगी भर बट एंड में आपको माधव ही याद आएगा और माधव के पास ही आप रोने जाओगे कि सारी जिंदगी मैंने मानव सेवा करी और सबने मुझे धोखा दिया सबने मुझे मेरी उम्मीदों को क्रश करा है तो अल्टीमेटली माधव विल बी उस पे एक पॉइंट और बोल सकते हैं आल्सो सेड दैट कि हम कितने मानवों की सेवा कर सकते हैं हाउ मेनी वी कैन सर्व ओके मे बी यू कैन वन फैमिली टू फैमिली थ्री फैमिलीज आवर कैपेसिटीज आर वेरी लिमिटेड वन एग्जांपल प्रपात गेव इन कैलकाटा देयर इज अ मिलियनर पर्सन केम एंड वन रिपोर्टर वाज आस्किंग हिम टू गिव सम डोनेशन ही सेड यू आर सच अ बिलियनर पर्सन व्हाई डोंट यू गिव योर मनी टू ऑल द पुअर पीपल सो एवरीवन विल हैव अ मील सो ही सेड ओके आई विल थिंक अबाउट इट आई कम बैक टुमारो so the reporter came back next day and he said i calculated all the poor people i calculated all the wealth <laughs> so if i had to distribute everything my wealth 
then each person will get 20 paisa. So here's my 20 paisa to you. Now what this 20 paisa will do to any person significantly, nothing much we can do in that 20, 20 paisa or 20 cents. So that's one um, supporting what Mataji said. You, your, your capacities are very limited. You cannot serve unlimitedly. Yes, uh, Ujjal Rasa, Mataji or Prabhu, you have another thing to support this point. We're just sticking to one point. Mataji, you are on mute. Uh, I think we again come back to the same point that we have to water the ro uh, root and then everyone is nourished. All the trees nourished, number one. And number two is, I think Charu Mataji talked about humility. You know, you have to, uh, first one must develop humility by serving the Manav and then one can approach Madhav. But I feel it's the other way around because in order to uh, completely surrender to the Lord, and serve the Lord, one, it requires complete humility uh, if one has to do it seriously and sincerely. Uh, and that quality of humility automatically develops uh, when one serves the Lord. Yep. Otherwise, because actually people who do philanthropy actually sometimes have pride in their heart when they are trying to do these welfare activities. Hmm. So the, instead of having uh, humility, they have uh, pride in their heart. Yep. Once uh, Mother Teresa was asked, uh, how do you have so much love for those children and, and other people. So Mother Teresa responded, I, she actually pointed out towards her rosary beads because she used to chant the name of God. And she said, when I chant the name of God, then I feel love for God and all his children. But you cannot do other way. If you just try to generate love, you will have love only for say humans or for your country people or for you know one community people. You cannot have for all people. When you serve God or chant the name of God, then Mother Teresa said, then I feel love for God as well as all his children. That's how I'm trying to extend my love. Okay. Madhuri Mataji, you have something to say? Sorry, Prabhu. Two things okay. I wanted to say for Satya Bama Mataji's points and your point, Prabhu. Are Just you? one yeah, matter please, of point. Please. That's what we are here. So, Satya Mataji said, like, if we uh, help uh, humans, we only get uh, at the end only uh, sadness or uh, uh, unhappy. Disappointment. Yeah, yeah disappointment. Never uh, happiness. Why will that be like that if you are not expecting anything in return? Just do service to people and then be satisfied with that. You only get uh, unhappiness when you have that false ego or or anything in return you are expecting. That is first thing. Second thing you said about the point, like you, Prabhupada has said that if I distribute my wealth, everybody gets 20 cents. Just a matter of argument. I'm please, talking. please, don't have to add uh, that. Please. Uh, if you think like that, every boon, boon, milke hi to hota hai. So everybody thinks like, you know, my wealth, everybody gets 20 cents. So everybody giving to each other and then every everybody will be happy and pleasant. Instead of taking from others, you start giving. So that's how Madhav Seva can improve and then your all lives can develop, improve like helpful. that. So <laughs> we cannot say, okay, just my, my, just my karungi to kya farak padta hai. Yaha pe to dukhi hai. To mai bhi na karu. Aisa nahi hota hai. Everybody has to think that Madhav Seva is better and then step up. Then every, everybody can be happy. Hare Krishna Prabhu, I, I don't know if this is, uh, sorry I to interrupt, but Mataji said, yes, we do, uh, if we don't expect from anyone, but no no human is uh, perfect, Mataji. Everyone has imperfections. We are just human. We are born with the false ego pride and um, anger. So any little thing or small thing, um, one maybe once or twice, but if it keeps happening, even, even, uh, uh, even as... Um, uh, trying to be devotees, we try. We do expect, in a subtle way, some things from other devotees as well. Even if someone says, "Oh, you made such nice garlands," or oh, "You made such did nice service," we will say, "No, no." But inside, we are feeling very good. So I mean, and then that is one point with devotee. But even as a normal person, um, we do expect in a subtle way, if not in a um, gross way. So um, in that way, in order to maintain or um, uh, go beyond that we we should uh, yeah uh, kind of um, we should uh, 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 transcend from that uh, in that uh, way to um, we should like uh, yeah uh, have more faith and do our devotion practices um, with more sincerity to get out of that uh, material modes and and that. 
Yeah, Mataji, we are going in a different platform, right? There are so many people who are doing the devotional service, but they're still, Anardhas are still there. So we are not talking about, you know, Anardhas are there anyway. Human being is imperfect. That's what I'm saying. We are here. That means we have imperfections, whether you are doing devotional service or not devotional service. But when you are giving something to others, just give in a mode of goodness. Yeah. Okay, you may expect pride or you may expect... Uh, uh, anything but not uh in return I, I you know from... distracting from the main theme <laughs> yes you're exactly. all coming on the devotional side actually yeah, even if you are anyway. doing a devotional service like you know garland is good and we get that anardhas in us anyway no. so you're i think talking uh, madhav seva versus manav seva okay let's listen others point yeah. as well okay Satyama Mata, you have a different point or you're just responding back if uh, you have a different point uh, let's uh, take uh, a different uh, Prabhu wanted to say something. Sorry, Prabhu. He was like, I want to say a point. For oh, Madhavi, please. Madhavi, please. Madhavi, 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 you want to say it? Quickly say, say it. Say yes, quickly. please. It's say it. Don't try. Just say it. Just say it quickly. Your chance will go there. Krishna made our body. Krishna created nature. Krishna gives everything. Haribo. He's a pakka Madhav Seva. <laughs> Very good point, Adi. Really nice point. Rupam Prabhuji. A different point. Yes, we'll just do for two more minutes and then we'll stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah bro. Just to counter to all dear Madhav Sevas. Oh, um, okay, wow. <laughs> uh, we have been talking for last 10 minutes about donations and wealth and everything, Prabhu. So we need to understand how wealth is created. Wealth doesn't fall from sky like a rain. Uh, someone has to work for it, uh, which means one way or the other, you land up doing ma human uh, Madhav Seva. So that's why I feel Manav Seva is superior. Or if, if you if you go with the point that one or the other, then yeah, again from Manav Seva point of view, that's that's a better version. Okay. Well done come from the sky. Okay, Charumata, you have another version of this. Sorry, Prabhu, I just forgot what point I had. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> but Take if it time. comes back, I'll no problem. Sorry. Um, I think it's 9.04. Let's stop it because we can continue for a long time. But I just wanted to create some ideas. Uh, it, it We can't reach to conclusion in like half an hour. Especially given devotees are fired up now. Pure josh mein aa gaye ab to. Aamne saamne hote to. Bata dete. Anyway, it was very nice, I guess. Uh, I thought uh, we'll just do a little spice up in our Bhakti Shastri class. Bro, next class, we may continue that time. Class or continue kar sakte hai. <laughs> and you will see there are more topics coming up. But one day I think we should just sit up and just do this. Just a fun debate. Just to, you know, just dig up some more uh, points from our minds. And when you are opposing, don't say sorry and this and that. You are in different team. Just be a strong different team. That's all I'm saying. You don't have to go down to soft uh, anarthas and this and that. No, just, just oppose. Otherwise, you will not raise your point. Oppose means oppose. And when you are in this party, you be in this party. Anyway. Um, Prabhupada, Prabhupada used to say, uh, Prabhupada used to take one part and you'll exactly, you'll go to the other side and you'll defeat that point also. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so we should try these things because when we go out, honestly, people will have these similar points. They don't have much philosophy to be honest. Some say, no, bhuka hai, usko khana do, mandir mein dood chadha rahe ho, and all those things. Very simple points they have. But if we are discussing in-house, then we can defeat, uh, not impulse or defeat, but we can sort of tell them the right truth. They may believe, they may not believe, it's up to them. Okay, let's stop here, it's 9.05. Usually we try to stop on time. Just two quick announcements. So assignment submission date is 30th of April. Um, I hope you have done it. I uh, have received some. Thank you to those who have submitted. And uh, please, uh, others, we have one week almost, six days. So please do that. 30th April, 11.59 p.m. That's your deadline. Uh, and you don't have to submit 11.58. <laughs> you can submit any time. <laughs> so don't have to do the last day. And then the last day I hear some messages. Oh, I have this and I have that. Do it early. We don't have to wait for the last day. Second thing, 19th May is Aisha Prishad exam in Temple. So we'll have two, two more classes. One, we will have a revision class probably on 12th of May. And then 19th uh, is going to be the exam. And then you have one week holiday. <laughs> That's how I was looking at the calendar. Um, just uh, we can share that. I think everyone knows that already. So we have Narsinga Chaturdashi in this week, 22nd and 23rd. We have Radha Gopinath anniversary. And there are some more programs by um, yeah some visiting guests on this weekend. 
So just prepare for this 19th May, uh, Bishop Mishra's exam. I'm here. If you have any questions, uh, we can set up a time and then we can talk um, some offline things. Um, Sundar Gopal, probably anything else? Uh, just a quick one. No, probably that was pretty much the yeah. So exam and assignment. So, okay. Hare Krishna, thank you so much for, especially for this debate. I really wanted to have for one hour, but actually we didn't have much time. Anyway, some something just to dig up our mind. Okay. Srila Prabhupada. Oh. Yes, uh, Charumata. Will you be going through the question and answers like we did? Yes, for Mataji. So um, I think 12th of May, we, when we have the revision class, then we'll have quick go through question and answers. And then I'll summarize all the 18 verses in a quick go and some relationship with each other. Now, that's mm -hmm. not going to the exam, to be honest, part, because relationships and all that is not exam. Just concentrate on your assignment and class notes, I would say. That's yeah. the most important. And that way you should be able to do the exam and two essays. Just please write your own words. You can read anywhere that I don't mind. Obviously, read bona fide content. But please write your own words. Don't type and paste. If you're doing that, put in a gray area or something and say, Prabhupada, Parpod. You can do that. That's not a problem. But I want you to express yourself in writing the essays. Don't just get references, 100 references. And if you could, write from Ishok Nishad itself. Don't even quote Bhagavad Gita. But if you really want to quote, you can quote put in gray words and those will not be counted towards your total word count, which is 750 words as a minimum. Mm -hmm. Just two essays, please. Mm -hmm. uh, not more and no less. 750 words onwards, but your own words, please. Yes. Are um, you reciting uh, verses, Prabhu? Yes. The exam? yes. What so is the exam? I've already published the PDF file for the verses for NOD, NOI, and Ishopnishad. Um, if you don't have it, I can send you again, Mataji. But it's already there. I did, I don't yeah, know, a few reciting. weeks ago. Okay. So that PDF file has all the three modules, uh, four, five, and six. So you can do that. There are, I don't know how many verses anyone remembers. I can't. Five or six, something like that. No, more than that. Oh, is it? Ten, ten verses. I In said. Ishop Nishad? No, Mataji. No. Oh, it's for five all modules. Okay. No, just the Ishop Nishad. Yeah, okay. it has all modules. But for mm. Ishop Nishad, I think it's five verses, if I'm not wrong. Have a look. Five mantras. Okay, yeah, verses, mantras, same thing, yeah. So that file, uh, you can start. Uh, most of them you will know anyway. I think one you don't, you will not know, which I hope that you have to learn. Others four you will know very easy. Okay. Um, anyone else have a quick question regarding that? Uh, you know, we are doing the revision on 12th of uh, May. May. Yes. And uh, many a times, like sometimes we have these little additions to our answers or we may have yeah. uh, not uh, understood very clearly. And then we do those changes. But then if there is only one week and we have already submitted, how can we make those changes? Don't worry about the changes. You just understand it. Make a note yourself. Yeah. Okay. So do your best in this assignment. Because we can't like do each verse and assignment. That's just too much. We only have one class a week. Uh, yeah. If we would have two classes a week, which many Bhakti Shastri group are doing, I think that would be much more convenient. But then it will be difficult for devotees. Um, I'm happy to do that if that's needed because this is what we have to read. We just have to finish it. So just do your best, Mataji. Send it to me by 30th of April. And if there are changes you feel, you do it in your own version for the exam, not for the assignment. Assignment you have done. It's an open book in that sense. Then correct yourself and then um, write exam appropriately. Okay, let's stop here. We are 10 minutes over today, which we don't do usually. Okay, thank you so much uh, again. And